The Mud Peddlers, a podcast where two nerdy ceramic artists share the behind the scenes of their worlds of clay. We're your hosts, Lindsay M. Dillon. And I am Dante of Earth Nation. Now we're going to talk about websites. Yeah, Lindsay and I both have websites. You have an Etsy, right? I have a website and an Etsy. I only have a website. I purposely chose to stay away from Etsy, and I only regret it like 20% mm. realistically. But there's there are benefits to both, and we want to talk about them today. Yeah, well, well, we're going to have a separate episode talking about like an Etsy versus a website web store. Right. Today, more what we're going to be talking about is like how we developed our website, some of the issues we ran into, things we would change. I also just recently completely redid did my website, which literally took me like three months to do. Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah. Step by step, day by day. So I guess first, let's talk about like why websites are important, why, or rather why we found websites to be important because there's different like views on that. So Dante, why don't you talk a little bit about like how you got your website started and oh God, that, and why you felt like it was important. That question almost answers itself right now. You have, like every now and then I get like, it's not that they're an older person. They're just an old head. You know what I mean? People who think like things used to be better back in the day, <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Regardless of their actual real age. But like, there's always at least one person in my DMs like once a month who's like, what happened to like getting getting to tables and getting to conventions and selling stuff and I'm like yeah I bet you're shutting up right now ain't you like, <laughs> but you you kind of need to have an online presence to constantly be in the eyes of your quote unquote customers or at least community I like to see it as yeah. in order to like put yourself out there and having your own website and having your own space to create and control is part of that and like as you build a community you're technically building a space for people to come and experience what you're building. Yeah, and having, like what you just talked about, about having control, I think is one of the biggest benefits of having a website because as fantastic and game-changing as social media is, Mm. to some degree, you're always at the whims of the algorithm, you're always at the whims of that other company. Yeah. You know, and having having a website is a way for you to have a space that's just your own, completely your own branding. You know, it's like the home base so that if by any chance, anything either happened with the algorithm changing and your viewing tanking. It's a way to have like a landing pad for Mm -hmm. yourself as a brand. And I think it also like, at least for me, I can say that I have an association with folks who have websites as being more professional. Agreed. Whether or not that's true. I mean, like, cause I know other, I know artists who like don't have websites and are completely successful as artists. Of course. But in my own cultural association is that like, if you have a website, you are more professional. Yeah. And I think there's, and I think there's positives and negatives to that as well. If we go into that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because like, if you have an Etsy, you will most likely sell more. It just seems to have more of like a, and I hate using this, but like a Walmart presence. You know what I mean? Where it's like, it's big, it's Mm -hmm. there, everybody knows about it. If your stuff's in that shop, you can say, I have an Etsy, and people immediately go, oh, okay, you have an Etsy. Yeah. But if you say you have a website, you might sell a little less unless you're really popular to the point where people know about you specifically and go specifically to your website to experience your shop if they're buying stuff or what you have to offer there. For example, I could put videos and blogs on my own yes. website. Yes, yeah. I don't think you could do that with Etsy, right? No, no, no. Etsy, well, I mean, it with Etsy, they do have uh, some website building options, but to my knowledge, from what I've experienced with it, it's much more limited than what you can get with like Squarespace, which is what the two of us used for yeah, I use, of our websites. I use Squarespace, essentially. Yeah. I, I won't lie, I use Squarespace because Squarespace was advertised to me yeah. by, like, a bunch of YouTubers yeah. who I like, and they, they were like, you should use Squarespace for these reasons. I got, like, a month free. It was super cool. I got to test it out, and if I didn't like it, I could just... Well, this, is not a, this is not a commercial Yeah, this isn't our ad. This is not our ad section. This is just... We're not, yeah. We're not <laughs> all those All those Squarespace, hey. Uh, yeah, we're not <laughs> we're not advertised for Squarespace, but, like, Squarespace, what would it... Uh, yeah. You trying Netflix and show? good <laughs> <laughs> yeah you yeah, trying to squarespace and chill <laughs> i use squarespace mostly because it was heavily advertised to me as well right but one of the biggest things that i continued to hear about like from other folks who would use squarespace is that it being mobile friendly is super important. Yeah, very. Yeah. Everybody's on the mobile. Exactly, exactly. And if you have a website that works on desktop, but the formatting doesn't work on mobile, mm. it is it can be problematic. And again, that with how everyone uses their phones, like I, I rarely sit down and look shit up on the internet on my desktop. Right. So um, Squarespace is really good about that. Like their customer service is good. It's just always on you, the phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? The future is now, Dante. The future is now. <laughs> but realistically, even on my own YouTube channel, like 80 something percent of my viewers are like 
through a mobile device. Yeah. There's very few of you who sit down and try to actually watch the video and click the links and whatnot. People just kind of want to, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that's really important, especially for Squarespace, to have that type of mobile integration. Is like you, you sort of need it. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing too, and this this kind of goes into one of the other things I was curious about, or I guess tips we could give for folks who like want to start a website, mm. but are kind of like, oh shit, I have no idea where to get started. That seems big. Like, yeah. This isn't an ad, but Squarespace does make it really it's simple. Really like, easy, yeah. guys. Yeah, like they they have they have like templates that you can use. And my first website, which I only well no, not my very first website. Technically, this is my second website. Right. I don't even remember. I think my last one I did through like iCloud or something. I really I don't even remember. Before it GoDaddy and yeah, yeah before yeah. it was real. Yeah. Basically, I just had a gallery website. So yeah. I had I had a contact me page. I had an about. I had a, a link to my Etsy shop. Yeah. And I had my gallery. And my gallery had five of my sculptures and then a couple sections for talking about like my nerdy mugs. Right and my my work with local coffee shops but it, like even if you are like really really beginning like let's say you just graduated from art school or you you you've been slowly building your art practice and you're like ready to start your first website like your website doesn't have to be really big or have a lot of content on it to just get started that's very fair yeah I think it's also good to hold your name too, because when, like when you have Squarespace, you get to have your own domain. Yeah. And that domain you pay for every year, and that domain is yours for the year, whatever, whatever you contract for it. I think it might be different, like six months or whatever. Yeah, I think it's a year, and then it it can auto renew so that you don't yeah. like, lose your name. Yeah. I think that's a benefit of it as well. Is like technically, I bought Earth Nation Ceramics domain name. If somebody else tries to buy it, I can legally say like, no, I have this domain name. It's I bought it through Squarespace. I have the licensing for it. It's mine. Yeah. No, they literally will not be able to buy your buy. Name. Earth Nation Ceramics, or in my case, Lindsay M. Dillon. Right. And just for some a little note, too, is that, like, hypothetically, if you've already purchased your domain name through another company, um, you can still, like, have a Squarespace space website. So, yeah. like, my domain name I bought years ago through a company called InMotion Hosting. Oh. And I basically, it's a little it's a little complicated, and if anyone has to deal with that, <laughs> send me a message, and I will tell you what I did to get around this. Right. But um, you can either transfer your domain, or you can basically link your domain company website with your website website yeah so that anyway so that that's a thing too is that if you've already purchased your domain name you can still use these other uh, website building companies yeah well let's talk about some of the things that like happen when you build a website in general because like etsy as far as i know because i had an etsy for like a month a long time ago when, <laughs> yeah. when i was like everyone has one i should get one too etsy was basically like you pay us money to put stuff up here and yeah. then they buy it Mm -hmm. But you're still paying us yes. to put stuff up there. And yes. then you just pay for how much stuff you put up there, right? Yeah. Okay, and that's pretty much Etsy. But, like, you get to carry their name up there. So you can then say, I have an Etsy, which is fairly common. It's right. just more eyes on the product, right? With Squarespace, you open it up, and it's fairly easy to kind of format it. But once you decide to open your website or once you decide to kind of format your website, they'll ask you, like, what are the four different types of websites that you want to have? Do you mm -hmm. want to have, like, a gallery? Are you trying to sell stuff? You know, what are you trying to have? Yes. And I think it's important as a small tip to decide what you're going to do. You, you Having a website is a good start, but you kind of want to decide what you're going to do with the website beforehand. You could have yeah. your own private little YouTube. Post videos up there, not post them on YouTube, only on there if you mm -hmm. feel like it. But, like, know that beforehand. Yes. And my own personal recommendation, if I'm going to, like let my biases show here is that I would recommend having an Etsy and your website separate at first. Yeah. Because especially if you've never really sold before, like for you, Dante, when you got your website, you already had a huge following on YouTube. So people already like knew you and they knew that you, or they, then they wanted to buy your work. Yeah. The real followers were like, oh good. I can buy stuff for me now. Yes. Now for me, when I first got my website, I didn't have that following. So it was easier and less expensive for me to have my Etsy and kind of post things occasionally. Yeah. And then have my website, which was the lowest tier that you can buy is like the cheapest one. I want to say it's like 12 or 15 bucks a month. And that's without a web store. The highest is like 40. Yeah. And that's for like bigger, like... That's big peepee. -pee. Big. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's, yeah. I personally would recommend if you are just starting out with your website, keep it simple as simple as possible and then have a separate Etsy to, or, you know, Shopify or however else you want to sell your work, yeah. have that kind of separate at first 
because I, I think it's just cheaper and easier. And at least like for me, like since I have trouble getting started with things because I'm like, ah, oh, shit, how am I gonna finish this quilt? Yeah. You know, it, it's just, it's easier, it's simple. So that'd be my recommendation. Well, what you said about Shopify, that reminds mm -hmm. me, there are other alternatives. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We There's should, a bunch of them. We should do another episode on that too. That we definitely should. But just, just know that like, it's not really a fight in between like your own website or Squarespace and Etsy. It's really a fight in between like your own domain where you can post things and then having someone else's domain in which allows you to post things for a surcharge essentially. There is also Shopify and there's there's a bunch of other ones. Yeah, Pirate, yeah. Pirate Bay or something. Pirate Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. think that quite. Oh yeah, no, what's that? Some about hub, some some know. kind of hub. Oh my know. god. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff you can post a bunch of stuff everywhere. Uh, but like it's those are the main two like big I guess competitors. Yeah. Um but but again, like you're saying, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. You can yeah. have a website and you can have an Etsy. You can have both. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just in the interest of your respecting your time. It is it is gonna be more work to have both. Not necessarily. Necessarily. It's just a little more time you gotta put to something else. It's another basket. It, yes, okay, that's, that's true. All, that's all that's I'm true. saying. That's true, that's true, it is. Yeah. It is, but at the same time, if you were balancing, like, so even now, yeah. shoot, this is kind of getting into like the website store versus Etsy thing. <laughs> we were gonna do a separate episode I know. on website no, we, versus Etsy. No, we really should have that as an episode, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my tongue on this and I will bring it up in that episode. What, so okay, so when you, were, when you were starting your website, like what were some of the biggest hurdles that you ran into? The biggest hurdles that I ran into were understanding how I want my stuff displayed. So there was a while where I wanted kind of like a, a I don't know what to call it. I'm going to call it like a show notes gallery mm -hmm. where you would make a picture, you would post a picture and then you'd put words next to it. Yeah. And I thought for some dumb reason that like, oh, I could put a price on that. You can't. That's just a gallery. A gallery is different from a shop. So when you're making Squarespace stuff, you got to push shop. Like you have to make sure Squarespace knows you want a price. So when they click on it, because the other way, the gallery, you click on it, it'll just show you more pictures. Yeah. Like you really have to. Another problem that I had was trying to organize my stuff. Mm. So I would have a section of like cups, a section of bowls, a section of plates. Later on, I found out that's not really the way to go for me. And this is again for your gallery, not for your shop, right? This is for my shop. That oh, I'm this is for your shop. Now. Oh, okay. Because my gallery, I change out the pictures like once every two months. But most oh, people, wow. yeah, most people go for like my blog and my shop. And okay. that not a lot of people are looking Wait, at my Wait, you gallery. have a blog? Oh yeah, I have a blog. Yeah, that's what I mean. What? I have a blog. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Well, when you go to earthnationceramics.com, it takes you directly to the shop because I assume that's what you're going for. So I put the, the slug, I put it there. So it goes directly there. If you push, So, okay, so like your homepage essentially is- Is my shop. Is your shop. Okay, yes. okay, I got you. But I do have a blog as well. And my blog is like, hey, I figured out a new glaze recipe. By the way, I put it on Glazy. Mm. Here's my profile. And I put some notes with it. And then I put my experience with it as well. Mm. But I do that like once every two months, month and a half, maybe I make a blog. Because I'm not blogging like my day. I'm blogging information that I think is important. So Loki, I think, dude, if you got a blog, you got you to gotta tell people. If I didn't know you had a blog, that's like, come on, dude. Look, you got to... <laughs> If you, I'm gonna I give you shit for it. I always feel bad. I always feel bad like shoving my stuff in people's faces all the time. I barely post on Instagram. I post like two or three times a week. Oh my god! But I know it's not. It's anyway. That's a different conversation. It's a different conversation. I'll back off. We have to save it. I know. Okay. All right. Anyway. So, yeah, but like okay, so, I do have a blog. But th that being said, like you should decide before you go in. Do you want a blog? Because you can make a tab on your own website specifically mm. for a blog. But you don't actually 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 have to know that going in. Like you can add these things. That's true. As your website. Does. Develops. That's true. I just so, want you to have an idea of what you're doing, but like, I don't want you to make a website and then be like, what do I do? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I want to hear more about some of the other issues that you ran into, like yeah. developing a website. But on that note, when you're talking about like how you want to organize your stuff, mm. one of the things that you can do, like as you are, or one of the things that I did as I was redesigning my new website is that like, I literally, <laughs> I sat down with my mom because my mom's amazing. Right. And, um, we actually had like a 18 by 24 sheet of paper and yeah. we literally like drew out like squares of like, this will be this page. This will be this page. And when you drew arrows where like each picture yeah. would link to a different page. So, oh. so even just brainstorming out on paper what you want the page layout to be yeah. can help you when you actually go into the program and start making the pages. Yeah, that, that's more of an intricate plan, but just a plan, I think a plan in general is good, especially because you have like a much more intricate website than I do. Now I do. Now but you do. Yeah, like, but... You have like links and pictures and stories. You have yeah. more to your page. <laughs> I don't. Mine's just like so many people bothered me that I had to make a website. 
website. Mm. Oh yeah, and you were saying too, before I before I cut you off, when you were talking about the organization, you were saying that you had cups in one section, bowls in another section, and then you were starting to say that like you changed that. Oh, I changed it. You, yes. Sorry, I rambled off. No, you're good. I I'm, I, I, I think I helped in that, which is rare. Usually you're the one Usually guiding me mean, off the... I'm trying to know. get better about... I saw some... <laughs> I see, I'd be seeing comments of people who are like... I think it's just people who are like, I'm looking for the most refined podcast. I want you to smoke out of a tobacco cigar <laughs> and talk about vitrification of clay bodies. But like... <laughs> But like we're not. <laughs> Your fucking face, <laughs> I wish I had a picture. I when made I a face. To the Instagram. I made a face of the oh, person with the bad comments. It was great. It was great. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, but like I, I quickly discovered that people kind of just want to put all the eye candy in one space so they can scroll forever. Mm -hmm. Because what ended up happening is I would only make two sets of plates. I would have an entire page for just two items, and it looked super barren. Yeah. That's why front facing is a thing. It looks full even though it's not in the back. Mm -hmm. Like that's just. That's, it's just good practice to just have a fuller section. People are more attracted to it. And people are more used to scrolling too. Like oh, that's a yeah. that's another thing that I was a uh, I have I'm in a, a separate like art critique group. Yeah. And that's one of the things that they like the feedback that they gave me on my website is that like yeah, it's better to have stuff that like scrolls because people are more used to scrolling yeah. than they are to like clicking to a folder that goes to another subfolder right. that goes to another subfolder. It's like right. And like you're saying it looks it looks barren. So Well, I'm I'm fairly I'm fairly organized, but I'm very decisive like indecisiveness makes me very anxious and I hate it <laughs> right but like because of that that kind of mentality I I seem to make my own website in the viewpoint of what I think the, I would like instead of the customer which is not good mm. so like I think oh if they're looking for cups they'll click the cup tab and they'll go to cups yeah. and they'll buy a cup because they want a cup uh-huh say cups like seven times I'm sorry but like they don't want that they don't want, like if yeah. you want to buy a plate you go to the plate tab right no just let me find it. Let me experience the eye candy. It's an experience. It's not so much a shop. I think it's, I don't know. It's kind of a male stereotype. Like, I go to the store for a thing. I don't go to, I don't go to shop. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, there is something to be said for, like, the easing the process between when you decide that you want to buy something and then you actually buy the thing. Yes. So I hear where you're coming from in terms of, like, wanting to make it easy to organize. Yes. But at the same time, making the page look full. So. Right. Yeah. It, they want an experience. Some people want an experience when they buy something. Mm -hmm. They don't just want to buy the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is there anything, any other like... No, I'm good. I want to hear that... about you. Uh, okay, I'll yeah. talk about myself. Well, no, um... I feel like we're digging hard on Squarespace because Etsy's like, you put your stuff up there on the thing and you're done. But building your own website, there's like so many facets to it. There are, but I think again, like you can literally pick 10 of your favorite photos of your work have a gallery page, yep. um, have links to your social media in the footer, yep. which it's really easy to do. Very easy, especially have, Squarespace. Ex especially Squarespace. Um, <laughs> well, this entire thing is just it's a Squarespace. It's a commercial for Squarespace Good at this Lord. point. Lord, oh my gosh. Anyway, but I mean, this is on like any website. It's, it's easy to do. So yeah. you can literally pick 10 of your favorite photos, write a one paragraph statement about yourself, have a photo of yourself, that's the about page, yep. and then have a contact page that links to your like email or something like that. Like literally that can be your website. Yes. Now the biggest issues that I ran into with my website as I was redoing it, mm -hmm. because like the biggest thing that I wanted to do to improve the website that I already had, because again, the, the starting website that I had was relatively simple. Mm. My biggest thing was that like, I wanted to have more content for people to read. So I wanted to have an artist statement that went alongside with every single design that I made. Oh, it's so good. Thank you. But yeah, so, so the two biggest issues that I ran into as I was upgrading my website was primarily the written content. And I think that's part of why it took me literally like three months to finally get this done. Yeah. Because it's really hard to write yeah. about your work. And especially when it's something like, I okay, so originally what I wanted to do was I wanted to have an artist statement that was like, here's the conceptual ideas behind this piece. Like, here's why I'm making it. I see. And then have an entirely separate section that was like, here's how I made the design. Like, here's the uh. decision process. Process. But after a while, I was like, okay, if I try and have both of these sections yeah. for each piece, I am. it's going to take me till July to get this done. So yeah. I ended up actually paring it back so that I just kind of had the here's why I make this piece, but not how. Yes. And then the other thing too, is that eventually what I'd like to do is make little booklets for each design. And then, then in the booklets, 
I'll have, here's how I made the design. Mm. So it's kind of like, I wanted to have enough information on my website that people could get to know me more, read more about me, but then also give them a reason to want to buy the booklets when I do make them. I see. Yeah. And then like, kind of like with you, like the organizational aspect of it yeah. took a long time for me to figure out as well, but the writing content was the hardest part. Y but yeah. last thing I'll say, after I wrote all this stuff though, Oh my God, it is so much easier to like talk about my work now. Like if oh, you were yeah. to ask me about any of my designs. You not flushed it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that in and of itself is a really helpful process. But again, if you are just starting out, you don't have to go into that kind of detail. You can if you want to, but if thinking about doing that is stopping you from making that website, then just fuck it, just don't do it. In my opinion, yeah. so. We're, this sounds weird, but we're, if we were a D and D character, our profession is pretty high in like crafting things that look pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, our writing skill though. I don't feel like our linguistics aren't like high, <laughs> you know? I actually feel really lucky. Here's one of the areas where like, as many times as I have talked about the frustration of the arts education, yeah. one of the areas where I feel like it did not fail me is when it came to writing. Really? Because yeah, because I had to write so many artist statements in college. I had to, yeah. I was asked like, why are you making this thing? You know, like what are the ideas behind this? Like, you know, so I- I hate them so much. I hate making artist statements. Oh yeah. I actively but, try and stay away from them quick thing. Do you want to actually go inside? All right. So for podcast listeners, in case I decide to leave this in here, the, the gentleman who takes care of the lawn came to work on stuff. So uh, the, if the audio sounds different, that is why. Okay. So we were talking about writing artist statements. You were saying that you- I hate them. Why do you hate them? I hate making artist statements because like I, it, it feels like someone's asking me for a reason to create. And that seems so strange to me. <laughs> why did you make? I felt. Felt what? the fuck out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. I felt, I just felt like making things. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. So we actually should, I'm going to write this in my notebook right now, but we should do an episode on artist statements um, because I think it'd be super interesting I'd to be talk useless. about that with you. No, but like, I want to hear your opinions on like why. And also I want to tell you why I think it's important. <laughs> She's going to change my mind again. I hope so. She's, I mean, no, no, honestly, She's like, so good at it. Too. Honestly, there are so many different reasons. Like it's debatable, like whether or not it's important to have, or like what kind of artist statements to have yeah. but again that's for that's for future us to deal with so well, that's the thing Yoshio is like you gotta have an artist statement and I'm it's the only one of the only things I'm like no <laughs> don't want it if you're thinking about having an about me page mm -hmm. that about me page can be your like artist statement like you can have an artist statement yeah. that's like overarching and you can have artist statements for individual designs and individual pieces mm -hmm. so I do feel like it is it is important to have something on your about page even if it's like yours is basically like my name is uh, or it's almost like what we have in our show notes yeah, where it's like Dante yeah. of Earth Nation Ceramics is a you know famous Famous YouTuber Fame, oh, no, with famous. Famous, over 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> no. I mean, but, but yeah, so, so it can be relatively simple. And again, when we do that episode on artist statements, we can go into some more detail about that. Yeah, for a while I was making artist statements that were like one sentence long because I either thought, so I made an armistice. Uh, armistice. I, I made, made an armistice. armistice. World peace, I have declared it. <laughs> I made an artist statement a long time ago at the Elgrove Fine Arts Center and I made it really short. Mm -hmm. And somebody was like, I love it. It's so mysterious. Oh. It's, and I was like, oh, so I could just make them short and you guys will infer that I'm making a wider statement based off one sentence. <laughs> like you'll infer that I'm like, I'm so big brain that this oh. one sentence encapsulates all of my thoughts about a subject in which you have to guess. Because mm -hmm. I'm being mysterious and artistic. Fair. Very but realistically, like, I just didn't want to write more than two sentences on the right. <laughs> I already made the piece. Just infer from it what you will. Yeah. So, oh, dude, I can't wait to have this discussion. I kind of wish we were having it today, but I'm, I'm going yeah. reel, to reel myself in. We have to reel because, ourselves in all the time. Well, no, because well, it's, it's nice, though, because it's like, I think we find interesting Paths. things. Yeah, within within a single subject. So so within this topic of, like, how how we have developed our websites, yeah. that, that gives us another thing to talk about, which hopefully y'all will find helpful. So we've talked a bit about why we think websites are important, some tips for like getting started on a website, how we've kind of designed our websites with yours more focusing on the web store aspect of it yeah. and mine more so now 
focusing on artist statements and people getting to know me and the reasons behind my work. Right. So in my brain, I'm always kind of like, whenever I do something, I'm always like, okay, cool, that was cool, but here's what I could have done better. And I do that for ceramics, I do that for writing, I do that for like everything. So when I look at my website, even though it's basically done, I'm still like, meh, but I could have I done this better. You know, like, is there anything that's like that for you with your website? Or do you feel like like it, it gets done what you want it to get done? It, it gets it gets the job done, although I think I could have done better at it. You know okay. what I mean? But so I don't... so in, in what way do you think it could have been better? Well, I think I just don't fixate on it. Like, I'm like, eh, I could have thought this through. So what usually happens is I go in there, I have a, a plan of attack, and then I revise it. So like with the store thing I was talking about earlier, yeah. where I was like, I just kind of put everything in separate tabs. Mm -hmm. I could have done that better. But now that oh. it, now that I've, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Okay. I've so already it's kind, kind of, of like... revised the stuff that I want to revise. Okay. They... So it's more like you could have done the process better, but you're happy yeah. with how it ultimately turned out. Yes. Okay. I, I would okay. say that's more it. And like, I wish I had done more research about it, but at the same time, it's very like, well, if I did more research, I would have never got it done. Like there's always more research to be done. Yeah. And I'd much rather learn from experience. Like, I'd much rather mm. do the thing and then go, okay, that's not working. Let me do something else. Yeah. What research did you do oh. to prepare for your website? You're much better at researching than I am. Well, you just said that you did, though. Well, yeah, but you're, you're good at it. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> so I mean, it, it's like... It was, uh, it was, <laughs> that was a real, like, <laughs> definitive <laughs> statement. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> We're horses now. Yeah. Oh boy. It was a lot of like other YouTube videos. It was a lot of other blogs. It was a lot of like I went to the directly to the websites themselves. Oh like, yeah. I I went to Shopify a lot. Like Shopify was almost the website. Oh, okay. But then like I realized I think I tried to talk to John and he was just like Nah, Etsy's just the spot. Mm. Like, he was like okay. it just has more eyes on its product. Like why wouldn't you not go there? Yeah, I almost was a Shopify. There's one called like something fire. Well, well, not so much. Firefly. Okay, okay, was, so, you, so like, this is when you were deciding whether or not you wanted to do a website or Etsy or Shopify? Yeah, but they all have different ways of presenting themselves. Yes. And they all have different ways that they're looked at by society. And because oh. of that, you know, because of that, I did a lot of research into like why. Okay, and, okay. And I ultimately found that like I get more control of my own website, but I have more of an audience with Etsy. Gotcha. You know okay. I mean? Okay. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I would argue that they also fulfill two different purposes. I would I would agree with that. Yeah, like Etsy, yeah. Etsy is pretty much like, I'm here to sell stuff. That's yes. it. I feel like doing a website is like, here's how I want the world to see me. Yes. And this is like that allows you to do that. Etsy. It's more personal. Yeah. If I'm understanding you correctly, the most of the research that you did when you were trying to figure out like how you wanted to up your online presence with a web store or with a store, yeah. you were mostly deciding between doing a website, doing Etsy, doing Shopify, doing it's like, so that was most of your like research. Well, also a lot of it was seeing how much they charge you. So like, mm -hmm. like, like Squarespace has a, a couple different avenues in which you can go. Like there's at the top level, there's like the business portion of it where yeah, it's like, yeah. we figure out exactly how much it is to ship to the person you want to ship to based on their distance and the weight of the package and the dimensions of the box. And we do that for you, but that's like $10 extra a month. Mm -hmm. And then I found out I don't really need that level. Yeah. You know, like through my own research, just reading stuff, I found out like, I'm going to ship through USPS anyway. Mm. They do that for you. And it's only based on weight or box. It's yeah. Like, like they don't need the, they don't need the address. They don't need all this to calculate it. They mm -hmm. just, you know, it's priority mail. Have we done you a shipping episode? I don't think we have done it. Okay, if no. not, if we haven't, or if it's not in the chamber, we need to do that because that's that's bringing up some really interesting... I'm going to write this down too, good lord. That's funny. I asked this sort of as a leading question because what I did when I researched websites, after I, after I decided that I still wanted to keep my Etsy and not integrate it into a web store, which we will discuss on the next episode, oh, or course. some episode, my main research was looking at other people's websites. So mm -hmm. I mainly went to Ave... Rivera's website. Mm -hmm. um, I went to her website. I went to John the Potter's website. Mm -hmm. I went to a Cherry Ceramics's website. Yeah. And I looked at Kakai Tokaki's website mm -hmm. just for different, how did they design their website? So my main thing was because I was struggling with how to lay out the website, I was like, all right, how do y'all do it? Like, right. how do you like, and what do I prefer? And right. so looking at other references was a huge part of what I did when I was researching to figure that out. So mm -hmm. did you do any of that? Like did when you, when you decided that you wanted to do a website, were there any other artists that you looked to, to? No, because I'm always super conscious about trying to like bite other people's, other people's style. And not like I'm oh. trying to bite their style, but like part of me goes, I want it to be my own. Like I want it to exude me. You know, I don't want it to like, mm. I don't want it to have remnants of others. Whatever I build, I want to learn from it and I want to do it my own way. I don't, okay. I don't want to like take a facet of somebody else's stuff and do it. And I think that's why I'm so adverse to being like, I don't want to do it that way. But then later I'm like, well, 
they don't do it that way to be like other people. They do it that way that that's just the best way to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's just what we all do because that's the most functional, easiest, most time and money saving way to do it at the moment. Yeah. And I would kind of argue that it's the same with like website design because it's, it's not like I exactly copied, obviously, from any of those individual people's websites. It was more to get a sense of, huh, well, like what I'm doing with TikTok right now, which is like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with TikTok. Yo, so, TikTok. So I'm going to like spend some time and like look at how other people are like running their TikToks and like asking a few other artists, like, hey, what do you think of TikTok? So it's not like I'm trying to copy anybody's particular style right. on TikTok, but it's kind of like You're I trying feel, to learn. Yeah, and I'm like I'm completely new in this world, and I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. So yeah. that's what I feel like is good about looking at other people's like websites, because obviously you're not going to copy anybody's in particular. Right. I mean, so. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at just accepting. It's essentially mm -hmm. accepting help and learning. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm very yeah. mm, <laughs> to it. You know what I mean? Well, there is something. I think I think there is something valuable and important to kind of like what you're saying. I admire the fact that you were wanting to just be like, no, like, I'm gonna learn how to do this. I'm going to, like, I think there's something, there can be something interesting to trying something completely new and working through some of the kinks of it. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you for listening to The Mud Peddlers with Lindsay M. Dillon and Dante of Earth Nation. Want to say hi and see what Dante and I are working on in our studios? Check out the show notes for links to our websites and social media below. You can find me at lindsaymdillon.com. That's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-M as in monster, D-I-L-L-O-N.com. And on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook at Lindsay M. Dillon. And you can find me at Earth Nation Ceramics. It's spelled exactly how you think it's spelled, but you can also find me on my Facebook fan page and Instagram at the same name at Earth Nation Ceramics. If you enjoyed hanging out with us today, or you have a question or topic you'd like us to discuss, take a second to rate and review the Mud Peddlers in Apple Podcasts. It helps our podcast reach new listeners, and we really appreciate the feedback. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.